In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a standard income statement. Time to engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Bellwether Garden Supply practice file. We're currently in the uh, customer and sales section. We're going to go on down to the report. So we're going to select the reporting drop down. We're going to go down to the financial statement reports. These are going to be like the most important reports. Of course, the financial statement reports. And these are going to be the standard reports. So like we saw last time, we have the, basically the standard balance sheet report. We also have the standard income statement reports. Now note the balance sheet is, is fairly standard because it's as of a point in time. You don't have all these differences in time frames and that you kind of need on the income statement on the income statement you might say well what what kind of time frame are you using for the income statement what's the beginning date you're going to have on the income statement so you've got some more standard reports therefore on the income statement for example you have the 12 period income and expense for companies that use 12 uh, period fiscal year so that's going to be one income statement you can use and then of course the idea here on the Sage 50 is these are the standard out of the box type of income statement reports that you can then use as basically the building blocks for most common formatted uh, income statement reports, adjusting them either within the software that you can then save or adjusting them with the integration with the intelligence reporting. So that's gonna be the concept or the idea of them. Then we have the income two years, income and expense for the current uh, period and year to date for, for this and last year. Then we have the income statement. Uh, this is gonna be the income statement, income and expense for the current period and year to date, including percent totals uh, per balance. This is the one I would typically use. Then we have the invert income statement versus budget. So if we have the budget numbers in there, of course, we have the income statement and budget. And then the income and earnings combines the income statement and the statement of retained earnings. So we're going to be using this one. I'm going to be going into the income statement um, report, the standard kind of income statement, which has the income statement for the current period and year to date. So let's go into that item. Then we have the choices up top. We have the current period. We have the range, we have the uh, current three periods. We're gonna be in the current period. We can have the page numbers. I'm gonna remove the page numbers. I'm gonna remove the zero balances. Remember, the zero balances could be useful if you're using the data input and, and you're kind of bouncing back and forth to the income statement as you enter data into it. Because if something has a zero balance, it does not mean that no activity has happened within it necessarily. And you might want the zero balances in there so that you can kind of do that quick zoom feature uh, within the software. So then we have the print all words capital, no, and we're going to center on page. So you have those options available. We have the margins then, of course, and the number of copies. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. There we have our standard income statement. So the income statement breakout is going to be standard type of, uh, type of income statement. It could vary, you know, depending on the industry, but standard type of income statement here. Revenues up top, we have the different types of revenue accounts. We have them broken out into sales, uh, sales type of revenue accounts here and then the different sections of our sales revenue, giving us the total revenue. We have that total revenue on a current month and a year to date basis. We also have the running balances. So that running balances you'll note uh, is, is in essence taking the percentage of the total. So if we're taking, for example, the second one, the 7447.62 divided by the 90591.55, that's gonna be the, if I move the decimal, two places over 2.22 uh, percent so that's going to be our uh, uh, running balances there so that's how that's going to be calculated we have our total revenue down below and then we have the cost of sales obviously the cost of sales would be relevant if we sell things like inventory so then we would have the cost of sales breaking out the cost of sales by category as well that's going to give us the total cost of sales then we've got the gross profit, gross profit calculated as the revenues minus the cost of goods sold, giving us that subcategory. Then we have all other expenses. This, of course, is typically going to be one of the longer sections of the financial statement type of reports. So we have all the other expenses, and that's going to be a totaling. If we sum that up, the 72,469 in this case, then we have our gross profit, which is less than the expenses resulting in a loss for the current period. However, in the year to date, we have the income. And so then we have uh, the net income uh, calculation, bottom line number of the income statement. So notice, of course, this is a timing statement. We have a difference in terms of the dates up top, as we had from the balance sheet, the timing being the three months ended. So we have to have a beginning date and, and an ending date with the income statement as opposed to the balance sheet. 
The income statement is tied to the balance sheet and the double entry accounting system. You can actually see that with the software because they do tie out the net income and actually put that net income, at least on a year to date basis, on the balance sheet. So if we were to take a look at that, let's just open up a balance sheet for that comparison. Open up the good old balance sheet. So we'll open that up. Same period, we're gonna say okay. And then scroll on down to the bottom line number to the bottom of it, not the bottom line number, but the net income is the 21 uh, 925.69 and that ties out to uh, the income statement. If I could find the income statement again, it would tie out, I believe, to it. So <laughs> there it is, the 21 uh, 90, uh, 69. So note that's typically the case with the year to date uh, number. They'll kind of put the year to date number in the balance sheet. That's how the income statement ties into the balance sheet. Remember, when you think about the income statement, you really want to think of it generally as two kinds of accounts. You got revenue type of accounts, which are going to increase the bottom line of the net income and expense type of accounts. And then the rest of it is basically how do we want to group? Do we want subtotals along the way? So in other words, the, the revenue are going to be up here. Do we want to group these revenues into, into separate accounts? Uh, we don't want to we don't want to group the, the revenue to too many separate accounts. For example, you wouldn't want to group the revenue generally by a uh, customer. Even if you have large customers, typically you'll use other reports basically to group it by customer. And oftentimes you don't want to group it by, you know, every kind of thing that you sell, items that you sell or services. Although the large items and services, the overarching items and services, you'd want to add these groups by. So what, what kind of revenue do you want on the reports? What kind of revenue t line items would you like on other types of, of reports? And so the revenue usually has less involved, of course, than the expenses because we do less things to generate revenue and we pay for everything else. Everything we don't do as a specialty, we pay for. So the categories of expenses are usually more. However, hopefully the dollar amount is less for the expenses as compared to the revenue. The cost of goods sold, similar situation. Now we're talking about the expense side of things. And we're just in the cost of goods sold is a very specific type of expense or a very important expense if we're selling actual inventory because it's typically the largest expense for the sale of something like inventory. And so therefore we're going to have a subtotal. We're not just going to call that just operating expenses. We have the subtotal and we're going to be comparing the revenue to the cost of goods sold because once again, the cost of goods sold very significant uh, number. So that's just a subtotal there. So instead of just having revenue minus expenses, now we throw in the subtotal because it's because we want that subtotal we want that breakout and then we, of course in this case we have all the other expenses and then uh giving us the net income at the bottom so we're just breaking out the expenses into a subtotal so we're just going on down the income statement from revenue minus all the expenses and there's just a question of how many stops do we want on the way typically <laughs> with how many kind of the categories we want on the way down that's going to be our income statement as far as the adjusting of the income statement, you have a, a few options. You have the uh, options up top to, for the design options we looked at when we came in. And you have, oh, I'm sorry, the options up top here with a cog, and then the design options. And these get a little bit more difficult. And remember, then you could have the integrations that you can have uh, for, for advanced kind of formatting if you want the system to save it. And then, of course, we can export it to Excel and do whatever we want with it to complete flexibility uh, with Excel to change numbers within Excel. However, uh, adjusting things in Excel obviously will not change the report as it's generated again in the database. So in order to, to integrate Excel adjustments in Excel and the reports here, then you'd have to use the uh, in intelligence reporting, which we might take a look at at a future time. We're not going to get into a lot of detail with that now. Re really neat uh, feature, but that's again a whole thing in and of itself. So we're gonna go ahead and print these out. We're gonna add these to the financial statements we've been making. So we could make a format with the PDF, but I'm gonna use the printer in order to use the Qt PDF to practice that again. So I'm gonna to go to the print. I'm gonna use the Qt PDF printer. I'm gonna go ahead and say, print that please. Again, that Qt PDF printer is a free uh, uh, printer. I would suggest having some type of PDF printer so that you can practice doing this type of format. It works well here and uh, with, with many other uh, programs as well. So we're in the standard income statement. I'm gonna just put it in the section two. I'm gonna keep it here in section two and I'm gonna say save. So we'll save that. I'm also gonna export it to Excel. I'm gonna export it to Excel to that same workbook that we did last time with the balance sheet. So I'm gonna to go to the Excel. I'm gonna say create a new, uh, I'm gonna say no, I wanna put this in an existing workbook this time and I'm gonna to browse to find it. Now note before I do that, just note that I have the options here. I'm not doing the free sales, enable automatic, and I have the show header in Excel as opposed to showing the header uh, in the header section in Excel. 
in which you may want to go between these two columns and test these out. It might be better actually to have it up. Let's do it up here this time. And then I'm going to go browse and let's go to section two. So we're going to be finding section two because that's what we want to be. And I'm going to be opening up the financial statement. That's the one we did last time. And then OK. And it should then open up that financial statement, which last time had the uh, balance sheet in it. And then it's going to add a new tab to it. And then uh, the new tab is going to have the income statement, the one we're just working on this time. So there it is and so there we have it so now we've got our, our new report here note that i don't see the name of the report up top because now if i go to the second tab over here the page layout tab then we're going to have the name because now it's in the header section so that's the difference i think it's probably better up there to have it in the header section then so i'm so but just you know that's your options so then we have our information so uh we could adjust this now in uh, excel so this is one of the basic type of reports we can have if we want to make any type of adjustments for example if i wanted to make this like a, a percentage so i could say i would like to make that a percent then i can i could do that if i would prefer that obviously any kind of adjustments within excel you can make within excel the only thing is that the adjustment adjustments you make in excel are not going to then populate in the standard report in uh in the sage software unless you use some kind of that integration kind of thing something more advanced but once it's in excel here standard type of thing no add-on feature you need in order to export to excel except obviously you need to have excel and then you can do adjustments in this in this fashion there so let's go ahead and save this note that if we take a look at these percentages we do need to adjust it because we it moved the decimal two places over but in any case i'm not going to get into that now i'm going to undo the percentage thing here so we'll keep it We'll keep it like that. And then once we print this, we can print each of these documents individually, or we can print them all, you know, collated on, on a printer. So we can have both of them print out and not have to collate them at a separate time. Or we can print them to a PDF file using that cute PDF printer. And that will allow us to attach just the one file if we wanted to give this to someone. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to browse and then I'm going to be using that uh, cute PDF printer. Actually, I'm not, I went to save. I'm going to go to print. I want to go to print, not save. And then I want to print the entire workbook. So I'm going to print the entire workbook rather than just a page. And now we have the balance sheet and we have the income statement. We have five pages down below. I'm going to be using the cute PDF printer that'll print it to a PDF rather than an actual printer, allowing us to get a PDF with the two documents on it. So then I'm going to save that. It's going to ask us, hey, where do you want to put it? I'm going to put it in section two. That's good. Financial statements. That's good. I'm going to say save and then let's just check out what we have. I think I can close this now. I'm going to save those changes. I'm going to uh, minimize the tab up top here. I'm going to minimize the tab up top here. I'm going to open up our folder. This is the folder we put it in. I'm going to put it in section two. That's where we have it. And so this is what we have now. Now, uh, we're going to keep on putting more financial statements in here as we as we think of reports. But at this point in time, we could add another folder and I might call this uh financial statement statements let's do that with an abbreviation statements statements and then we're going to put in uh, the balance sheet in there and then the income statements so we could give this individually to somebody uh, or attach it and, and zip this file i could send this to a zipped or compressed file and attach that to an email i could print the reports from excel now and have them pre-collated without needing to know any advanced uh, skills about the printer which I typically don't have any advanced knowledge about the printer skills. They kind of, I'd rather fix it here in the document side of things. And then we have the PDF file that has, has multiple uh, reports in it and the one PDF file that we can then provide uh, to somebody with one attachments on an email. So we'll continue uh, building these as we think of different reports and, and think about how we can display these and uh, provide them to others as we go.